Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet. Let us start our biology class again. And the topic to be continued is microorganisms, friends and foe. Till now, we have already studied about these microorganisms, how they are useful to us and how they are uh, dangerous. Now, let us study about certain diseases which are more commonly found in the plants. So first category, it is bacteria. One of the disease of bacterial infection is citrus canker. Now this citrus canker, it is a disease which is found in the citrus fruits. You can think of certain examples. It is like grapes, lemon, lime, oranges. All these comes in the citrus fruit category. So all the, these citrus fruits, they get the victim of this particular disease. Now what happens here? Now this is an airborne disease. When it is uh, infecting these plants, then generally the target site is the healthy fruits, uh, newly developing fruits as well as the leaves of the plants. So initially when the, this disease starts, uh, starts, then they can actually reduce the growth of new fruits in the plants. Further, fruit is already healthy. Then it may spoil the quality here. You can see here this picture. It is uh, showing the disease in the lemon. In the lemon, you can see this uh, infection over the skin. Normally, it is green or yellow in color without any dark spot. And in this case, there are some rusty brown color spots found over the surface. And this is the indication that the plant is suffering from the disease. Not only this, it may also affect the quality of the fruit. Of course, the disease is actually affecting the quality or the uh, quantity of the fruit produced by the plants. Next, we can show the apple scab disease. Now, as the name itself is suggesting, it is found, it is commonly observed in the apples. Now, similar fruits like apple, like pears, even they can be the victim of same particular disease. It is, of course, a fungal disease. Now, in this disease, what's happening here is the size of fruit is being affected. That is the initial effect of this particular uh, infection. Besides, the quality is also being affected. You can see this particular picture here. It is showing these spots over the surface. And these are actually later stage of this particular infection. Otherwise, in terms of its ripening quality, it is also getting affected. The constituents present in its pulp, even that is getting affected due to such type of infection. Further, the another disease is shown here, the viral disease. Now this virus or the viral, common viral disease is the yellow vein mosaic disease and is commonly observed in the case of pindi that is okra or lady finger. Now besides, it can also be observed in many different kinds of plants like sugarcane, like there are many other, uh, we can say like uh, uh, peas or uh, uh, different grains like moong. All these are actually peas. So these are actually uh, getting, the, uh, are the victim of this particular viral disease. Now, in this case, as we are saying or it is being highlighted here, the name it is yellow vein mosaic. So yellow is for the color definitely. Vein means the you must be knowing the leaves are having some debris over there. There are the central line over there and some initial debris are fibers are also present in the surrounding. We can show it here like it is something like this. If this is the leaf and we are having a central cell debris here. And this partitions or these small fibers present in the leaf, they are known as vein. So these veins, they become yellow. And this is the beginning actually. And this particular infection, which is causing the yellowishness of these leaves here, they are going to spread into the vegetable also. Which vegetable? As we have given some examples, cow pea or uh, chicken pea or this lady's finger and so on. So you can see these leaves here. This is an okra plant or it is a lady's finger plant. Now in this case, this is the leaf here and you can see these small lines. 
Now these are getting yellowing, uh, yellowed here and of course they are going to be spread in the surrounding. And definitely it is going to affect the fertility of these plants. Besides it is also going to affect the quality of the developed uh, fruit or the vegetables here. Besides this there is another common class of organism that is fungi. One of the example we have said is apple scat. Besides that there is a rusting of different plants. Now rust, you all know what we mean by the rust? It is like some brownish structures appearing over the surface. Brownish with a rust like structure. A dry skin uh, which is having such type of color. Now this is the appearance from outside. But internally it is affecting the quality in terms of its nutrient composition. As like uh, we can say the content of uh, proteins or other particular parts in the fruit or the vegetables. Now this picture is showing the rust of wheat plant. Besides wheat, the common victims of such disease is like uh, sugar cane or other type of grains. All are commonly affected by the uh, by such type of fungus. And it is a airborne disease again. Now you can see here this quality. This is a normal green structure. But here you can see over the skin these brown rust like skin is present. And this is what we call as rust of wheat plant. So this is how the disease are commonly found in the case of plants, animals as well as human beings. Now one thing you must have observed during the entire session. That whatever organism is causing disease is highly specific. That means a polio virus, it cannot cause typhoid. They are highly specific. There is a specific cause for the specific disease. Number one. Number two, the host is also a specific. If we are saying typhoid, typhoid which is caused by Salmonella typhi. Now this Salmonella typhi is not going to infect the plant or it is not going to infect the animals. Typhoid is not found in these cases. So as the causing agent for the specific disease is specific, similarly the victim is also specific. Chickenpox is not observed in the cow or the cattle and cowpox is not observed in the higher organisms or the, the human beings. Smallpox is but all these are from the common family. Cowpox virus, smallpox virus, then herpes virus, all they are belonging to the same particular category but they are having the specific host. So at the end I would like to summarize that these diseases are caused by the microorganism. Though the microorganism which is causing a particular disease is highly specific. Symptoms generated in each infection is also highly specific. And at last, the host organism in which the infection would be caused is also specific. So there are general preventive measures which should be taken to control the diseases in humans. Animals are not so much concerned. Plants cannot take preservation or prevention on their own. But we human beings can follow certain uh, practices so as to avoid the infections. So how it is? Let us understand one by one. First is, we should keep our surroundings and ourselves clean. So the very first point could be your own hygiene conditions. Keep yourself in a safe hygiene conditions is the first perspective uh, for keeping yourself safe. Safe against the infection. Besides, the another way is uh, with respect to uh, this your uh, hygiene condition is don't allow water to get collected in the surroundings. Segment water is collecting in your surrounding. What is going to happen? You can imagine this thing very easily. Number one. Water itself is a, a source of microorganisms. So directly if it is getting mixed up with this, I mean the normal, it is getting exposed to the surroundings, it may get bacteria or different microorganisms. And if it is used up, it may be problematic. Besides, if it is simply collected in your surroundings, then what will happen? It may give rise to different other vectors also. 
So these nectars can, if they are sitting over such type of water, it will actually spread the disease. Further, we should keep the patient in the isolated condition. This is another way to keep, to avoid the particular disease or the infection. Now, keeping the patient, it should be taken ethically. See, if you are keeping the patient in an isolated condition, it will provide two advantages. First, the patient is not going to be exposed to further other kind of infectant. So, it is safe for the patient itself. Normally, patient is already weak because of the prior infection. And now if it is again exposed to the surrounding conditions, it may get multiple different kind of infections. Or the uh, other type of uh, microorganism can also enter. And since body is already weak, so the patient may get the disease more seriously. And the situation may become more and more critical. So this is good for patient to, be, to remain in the isolated conditions. Not only this, it is safe for other people present in the surrounding because this patient is right now a carrier of the disease causing agent. So if it is exposed, it is kept in the open condition, it is going to spread the pathogen in the surrounding either by sneezing or in by any way. It is going to release the pathogen into the surrounding and if they are inhaled or utilized by the healthy person, Definitely, it may become a cause for disease. Now, besides this, we should keep the personal belongings of the patients always in the separate place. Now, this is nothing like we are just uh, uh, doing this partiality with the patient or something. But it is actually important from hygienic condition also. If these belongings are used by, the, by all and everyone, then definitely it may become a source for the spread of pathogens in the surrounding. So definitely the community may also get affected. Not only this much, one should maintain the personal hygiene conditions also. They should follow the good sanitary habits. Whenever we should constantly wash our hands properly, a proper bath should be taken. Disinfectant should be a common use at household in the household activities. So these are actually helping in just removing out the pathogen or the disease causing agents present in your surrounding. We can take an example, if you are going out and you are exposed to many different places, you are touching so many places, who knows which bacteria, which particle is present at which place. You may get it stuck over your hands. So when you touch it back or you eat food with the same hands, then definitely you can ingest the particle or the pathogen and of course you can then become a victim also. So these little bit good habits can help you for, uh, from getting the disease. Besides this, another way for uh, this particular precaution is consuming the properly cooked food. So cooking is an important task. The food should be cooked in a proper method. Before cooking, the vegetables or the fruits or whatever things you are using in the kitchen they should be washed properly because they are ultimately they were uh, grown on the plants and these plants are directly exposed to air and water and of course soil and these three are the natural habitat of the these infectants so they should be properly washed initially and then for cooking purpose they should be boiled completely the uh, half raw or this type of food may actually have the bacteria or the other type of a disease causing agent. So if you are cooking it properly at the right flame for the right timing then this high heat can damage the pathogen or the bacteria or other organism present in that food item because these are sensitive towards high temperature. If there is high temperature it will denature the proteins of the bacteria and definitely it will just kill them off even if they are present and if they are present even if they are not present, then also it is a good habit. Because we cannot see that whether they are present or not. So prevention is better than cure. Hence, it should be cooked properly. It should be utilized in a proper method. Further, we should always use boiled drinking water. Nowadays, we are using RO water. 
So these are actually just removing, filtering the water. But boiling will also remove the bacteria or the fungal particles or whatever is present in the water over there. And hence, they are going to prevent us from the diseases. Further, besides drinking water, drink, uh, boiled drinking water, we must use mosquito net and the repellent. Why so? Because these mosquitoes are the vectors. They are the carriers of many pathogens like plasmodium, like trypanosoma. So we should take prevention from such mosquito bite. Although all mosquitoes are not the carriers, but again, we never know which mosquito is carrying the protozoa. So it's better to take such a safety measure. Further, uh, insecticides should be used properly. For what purpose? For controlling the breeding of the mosquitoes. In case if you observe the uh, collected water in the surrounding, normally in summers, or uh, after the summer season, some water is collected, is this present in the cooler or in the surrounding regions. Now this should be sprayed with the insecticides. What you mean by insecticides? These are the chemical substances which can inhibit or kill, inhibit the growth of the uh, insects or it can kill the insects also. So use of such insecticides will not allow the mosquitoes to grow. And thus, we can remove the uh, vectors from the surroundings. Besides this, the very important method of this prevention is vaccination. What is vaccination? We have already studied. You must be remembering in a particular in a, uh, session, one of the sessions we have studied the entire detail of vaccination. So basically vaccines are what? They are the dilute solutions of weakened or dead antigens which are when injected in the body they can boost up your immune system and will therefore help in developing the memory against that particular antigen. So for the, in this case the exposure is there towards the antigen or the pathogen and disease is not caused. So memory would be developed. Now during the secondary infection, in case when we are naturally exposed to the similar kind of uh, microorganism, they will enter into the body and our body is ready to fight against it because we are already having it as a memory in the cells. These vaccines have already developed the memory in your cells against such pathogens. And this is how uh, this vaccination can help in the prevention against the serial diseases. Now this vaccination program is actually already established. The immunization programs are established by the government itself. So the proper vaccine should be given at a suitable age. Besides not only this, this should not be restricted. We should never think that we have completed the entire plan. So we should not take it in future if it is required. Not at all. Whenever government uh, is uh, giving the instructions about certain new epidemic disease and they are releasing the vaccine, one must take it as a precaution further against the disease. Not for only itself, but rather for the entire society. So these are the several measures which if followed, that can prevent us from various diseases up to an extent. Although these are not the 100% uh, uh, assured method that we can never get the disease, but still this can actually reduce the risk factor for the particular disease. So we should end up with the point that prevention is better than cure. Instead of facing the symptoms, we can follow these easy measures in our daily life. Even if then we get the disease, we can get it cured with the help of treatment. So, further, we will study the next part again, which is related to the preservation of food material. Because the microorganisms can also affect the quality of the food. So, we will study that how this spoilage of food can be prevented. So, till then, goodbye. Thank you so much. Have a great day.